Hey y'all, and welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're going to tackle legal problem 19, remove nth node from end of list. After that, we'll go over an actual variant of the original question. It's somewhat shocking to hear that this particular twist makes the variant simpler. We're hesitant and we'll sleep with one eye open. Let's read the problem statement. We're given the head of a linked list and we want to remove the nth node from the end of the list and return its head. Simple enough. Checking out our example, here's our link to list as well as an n of 2. This means we want to remove the second to last node, node 6. My immediate thought is to iterate backwards, right? We can start from our tail and work in reverse. This is the last node and this is the second to last node. And it's true, we traversed two nodes to land on the node we want to delete. There's just one problem, uh, technically two. The blatantly obvious one is that from node 6, there's no way to remove it. We only have a reference to the next node via this next pointer. Ideally, we'd be at node 5. From here, now we're able to set its next pointer to the next, next one, node 7. Rewinding just a little bit, where were we? That's right, problem number 2 is that it's impossible to iterate right to left. We're not given a doubly linked list where we have pointers to the previous node. Rather, we're given a singly linked list so we can only really traverse the other way around. This is a restriction on what we can do, but it's also a blessing because it limits the scope of what we can do to achieve our goals, to remove the nth node from end of list. Now, to get to node five from left to right, how many nodes must we traverse? Well, it would be the Five, right? We know this is correct because if we have a length of seven nodes, then seven minus two is indeed the five, five iterations. Reflecting this logic programmatically, we can make one pass left to right to find the length of seven. Afterwards, we can do the seven minus two to get five. And then with this number, we can make a second pass once again, left to right to traverse five times, landing us at node five. Let's try it out. It's the one, two, three, four, five. I'll summarize my anger in one sentence. I hate off by one errors. They're the bane of my existence. Okay, that was two sentences, but you get my point. Let's do everything we can to not shoot ourselves in the foot. Let's create a dummy node. And of course, attach it to our head node, node one. Amazing, if we have an extra node at the very beginning, we can now traverse exactly five times to get to the desired node of node five. We're fully ready to do what we did before and set its next pointer of the current node to the next next node of seven. In retrospect, we wanted a pointer at the L minus nth node. Very cool observation. The last thing we want to do is return the head, which by the way is node one. Thank goodness for our dummy node, we can simply return the next node after the dummy. This is our answer. This is what we return. The time complexity is two times big O n because of the two passes, but can we do better? Ordinarily, I wouldn't think to ask this question, but there is an unintuitive clever solution in one pass, as suggested by LeCode here. Let's mash together what knowledge we already established and go from there. Okay, so what do we already know? We know that there's a buffer of two nodes from the end of our linked list, from where we want our pointer to ideally be, right? At node five. Therefore, let's make this pointer a first class citizen and name it something like L. L for left is the left node of this window looking thing that's definitely not about to slide. What else did we take note of from our naive two pass approach? We use their eyes to observe that we have a singly linked list meaning we can only traverse to the right using the next pointer. Therefore, if we chose to shift our left pointer along, then it's clear our window of two nodes would slide over by one. Yes, I'm aware there's not a node here, but that's not my point. If we iterate once more, placing L at the last node, which we know to be true because there's a null pointer after it, then our window would be here. Whatever, sure. More importantly, do you now notice how two nodes ago, our L pointer was exactly where it needed to be? Perhaps I made it painfully clear, but a sliding window 
gives us a gap of two nodes. We can utilize this to our advantage. If we know we're only restricted to left to right traversals, then we can apply what we just did with the sliding window from the beginning of our linked list, or to be exact, from our dummy node here. Here's our L, here's our sliding window. Of course, a sliding window wouldn't be a sliding window without two pointers. We have one, the left pointer, but we need the right pointer also. To simulate this in code, we can write a for loop that runs for n iterations, or the one, two times. It's the two nodes in our window spearheaded by our brave right pointer, with a lagging left pointer by n nodes. After, in a while loop, we can keep shifting our window, and thus our two pointers to the right, so long as the right pointer's next node is not null pointer. Once here, we've seen it twice already, this is nothing new, we can remove node 6 by doing left next equal to left next next success. But remember, the problem instructs us to return the head of our linked list which is not our dummy node, but the one right afterwards. This is our answer, this is what we return. Huh? That's what you sound like? Jeez. Anyway, good question. If you only had one node going through the motions, we'd traverse our right pointer by an n of one, as seen right here, to create a sliding window of one node. We'd initialize our left pointer thereafter, and dispatch our while loop so long as our right pointer doesn't have a null pointer after it, but oh wait, it does, so we don't run the while loop. I'm a broken record at this point. We remove node one by doing left next equal to left next next. Doing so removes the reference to node one. Lastly, we return the node after the dummy, which is the null pointer, that's our answer. That makes sense since we deleted the only node in our input linked list. The time complexity has been reduced to a single big O n, where n is the number of nodes, and the space complexity is big O of one, because we only use two pointers, left and right, as per usual with sliding window problems. Great work, let's jump into the code. The initial thing to do is to create our dummy node. We're simply using it to avoid off by one errors among other conveniences. After that, let's attach it to our head node for our traversals to actually work. Okay, let's spin up our right pointer and assign it to the very beginning of our linked list, technically the dummy node now. We'll loop n times, and on each iteration, move the right pointer along. We now have one pointer in our sliding window, but we now need the left pointer. So we'll run a while loop so long as the node after right is not null pointer. On each cycle, we'll move the right pointer along and similarly, the left pointer. When that's done, our left pointer is on the exact node we want it to be on, the node before the nth node from the end. We'll set its next pointer to its next next node. Lastly, we return the dummy node, which is dummy next. We are finished, congrats. You'd be happy to know the variance acts as a cooldown to all this thinking and reasoning. We'll happily take a look. Welcome to the variant. I hope you enjoy your short and comfortable stay. The twist is quite starkly different. Let's read the problem description. Given the head of a linked list, we want to remove the ith zero indexed node from the beginning of the list denoted by input n, and ultimately will return its head. If there is no node to remove at the ith index, return the head. Overall, this is a huge relief, unlike the OG problem, we're tasked to remove the ith node from the beginning. This makes our lives so straightforward, and it's solely because we're given a singly linked list, whose pointers point to the right. Therefore, we can traverse left to right with ease and without any need for clever math manipulation. I am very confident, let's just jump into our example. All right, we have an n of zero, so let's initialize a pointer called i, and iterate this zero times, and realize we can't delete this node. This is the same pitfall in the original Lico problem, where off by one. 
it's easily forgettable, but indices start at zero. One thing's for certain, we need to bring back our ever so convenient and all purpose dummy pointer. With this, all is good again in the world and we can intuitively write a for loop to iterate an n of zero times from the dummy node. Doing so means we go nowhere, which now from here, we're very poised to do what we did in the OG problem and set node i's next pointer to i next next to node two. With this, node one poofs into oblivion and like before, we'll return dummy next to return the head node of our linked list. This is our answer. This is what we return. Now, you may be curious about constraints, and that's something that's paramount to ask your interviewer. With warm-up problems like these, they could have killer edge cases. My brain immediately thinks to the variance of the kth largest element in an array. Anywho, let me present some possible edge cases to you. First up, what if we had four nodes in our linked list, but also an n of four? Well, we loop four times from the beginning. Then we'd finish our loop and end up on the last node, node four. No surprises yet. That said, if we were to run our familiar i next to i next next, then running next on this null would blow our code up. We'd get a null pointer exception. Either way, there is no fourth node to even delete. In these cases, where there is nothing to remove, we're instructed to just return the head node. This would be your answer. This is what we return. And in code, to avoid this deathly error, we can write an if statement that after our for loop, if i next is null pointer, we can return dummy next. Sounds logical to me. Next up, what if we had zero nodes and our n was also zero? We'd run our loop to go nowhere. Post loop, we'd encounter the same issue as before. I next is a null pointer. So we'll simply return dummy next, which is null. Great, it's a two for one if statement, but wait, there is more. What if we had five nodes and our n was 9,000? Clearly we'd run our for loop as per usual and then realize we shouldn't loop another 8,000 and something something times. We should exit our loop early and like before, return dummy next. That would be node one. That'd be your answer. Fantastic. We have two if statements that don't bloat the implementation that much, and it covers some pretty critical edge cases. Okay, we're ready for the code. First things first, let's initialize our dummy node and set it to our head node. This is exactly how we set it up in the OG problem. We'll assign i to dummy and run a for loop for n times. We call an edge case. If our n was say 9,000, but we had like 10 nodes, then we should check for this. If i next is none or null pointer, then we'll return dummy next as instructed, and then we'll call it a day. Otherwise, we'll keep progressing our i pointer as normal. After the loop, think back to the second edge case. What if the next node is null? We do the same thing, we return dummy next. If not, we have our ordinary case where we'll do i next equal to i next next. Return dummy next as the last thing to do, and that is it. Good job, you should be proud. I wish you luck on your interviews. I hope you're having a good day. If not, that's okay. And if you learned something today, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.